Expenforbles or Expendables 4 review and thoughts. So I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie I came close to loving, I really wanted to love. This video will have some jokes and we'll get into some serious topics. And let's see. Yeah. I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. The top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG After Strikers, and I implore you to do so. And then there are some links to videos to help explain why this is such an important strike. So I start this video with a review where I almost definitely won't spoil anything. If I decide to do so, I'm going to verbally warn you before I do hold up an index finger until I'm done with the spoilers. You can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. I will not be warning before spoilers for earlier entries in this franchise. And as soon as I end the review itself, please note the rest of the video will, will have lots of spoilers. And let's see. Yeah. And it, yes, including discussing in detail the ending. So this movie is rated R, which is, of course, you know, that was one of the one in the long list of problems with the third movie was that it was PG-13 and yeah there's definitely there's a lot of violence and gore in this the the profanity is also quite um, yeah quite frequent and severe as the IMDb Parents Guide puts it, um, yeah, sex and nudity are mild, and so is alcohol, drugs, and smoking, and frightening and intense scenes are moderate. I do think that this is a franchise that just, it makes much more sense for it to be R than PG-13. I don't necessarily, I, I, there are times in this where it feels like they're just going out of their way to to be as you know harsh as possible and I'm not against that I I you know I don't think that's automatically wrong but I do think there are a couple of things where like they kind of they run out of good material and they end up just using some meh material where I feel like they should have either rewritten it to have better material or just not, you know, done with, yeah, or done without that little bit of R-rated material. But yeah, you know, the, the movies from the 80s and 90s that it's, that, that this franchise is sort of culmination of and tribute to are R-rated. They're not all equally violent. You know, if you watch the original cut of Commando, it's, I had forgotten there's really not that much violence there, but I do hear there's another cut that has much more violence, you know, and then you have something like Rambo 2 with pretty intense violence, you know. But yeah, it, it just, I mean, is anyone watching these movies that isn't old enough to remember the the older ones and thus over the age of 18 or I guess it's, let's see I guess it's 16 in America and yeah I have watched this movie once and I hit record basically as soon as I got home from the theater and yeah so the plot is yet again the the expendables fighting an arms dealer like i i feel like at some point if they keep making enough of these just statistically at some point they got to hit on something other than that but then i mean at least it's not like drug runners over and over i'm i'm beyond over the whole war on drugs America wants to be in charge of making money, you know, dealing drugs kind of thing. So, yeah, really, really glad that that's not 
Now, this was directed by Scott Wall, and he, before he started directing, and I have to admit, from based on some reviews, I thought, oh, is this really, is this like the first thing? It's not the first thing he directs, and it's, you know, but yeah, he used to work in stunt. Uh, you know, he, he did stunts, he was a stunt coordinator, yeah. But in 2007, he started directing, where he directed a short, uh, yeah, short action film. Then he directed two action movies. Then he directed this movie called Six Below, Miracle on the Mountain, which is not, apparently not an action movie. It's a biography drama sports movie. Then he directed another action movie, and now he's directing this. So... This is the fourth action movie he's directing, the other three being Act of Valor, Need for Speed, and Hidden Strike. And the it's it's one of those things where the these movies are very much about stunts. That's one thing that they very much you know, they wanted Stallone really wanted to bring back the the sort of visceral stunt driven kind of action so it makes a lot of sense to get a former stuntman you know to direct and you know these these movies aren't really about the more dramatic and and like story elements and such so I can definitely understand where they're coming from and I don't I mean the di the direction it's not as good as, yeah, I, I don't know that I would say it's as well directed as the others, which is not that high of a bar. Um, it's not, like, way worse directed. This is not like when John Moore, who somehow... I, I don't I don't even think I want to look up if he's still making movies, but he kept making movies way past the point when someone should have like put out a restraining order, legally prevented him from continuing to direct movies. When he did a Die Hard movie, it was a massive nosedive as far as direction goes. You know, say what you will about you know. I know not everybody loves you know. The movies are not all equally good. I know a lot of people really hate the fourth one, but compared to the fifth one, just the direct, just how did I mention? I, I didn't already mention. I'll probably swear in this video since they they do in the movie. How the fuck has John Moore gotten to direct for so long? When like, just yeah, unreal. How how bad he is at just very, very basic stuff as, as director. Anyway, the movie was written by, and this is one of those, it's not great when there's so many writers on just one thing, so there are four writers on this thing. Um, yeah. So three who wrote the story... And two of the ones who wrote the story also wrote the screenplay. And then there's, yeah, one more guy who wrote the, the screenplay. And, of course, Dave Callahan has a credit for the, the characters, but he didn't write anything new for this, as far as I understand. But, yeah, um, this was written by Kurt Wimmer, Ted, Tad Daggerheart, Max Adams, and Spencer Cohen. I don't really know the others, but I do know Kurt Wimmer. I am shocked that he is still, like, when researching this, I had I had actually forgotten, but yeah, he directed a Children of the Corn remake in 2020. No, not the David Anders one. I am, I am shocked that he, and, and apparently, yeah, he's directing something upcoming. I'm shocked that anybody let him direct after Ultraviolet, but I guess 14 years of penance was considered enough. I maintain he did a fantastic job on Equilibrium, both, you know, directing and writing. I have not watched One Man's Justice. Um, let's see. 
yeah, I th I think he did a, a good job writing Sphere. The the uh, he has an adaptation writing credit. Uh, right, he helped write Street Kings. You know that that is a legitimately good script. He wasn't the only person, but yeah, um, yeah. Then he wrote Salt, and the Total Recall remake, and the yeah. He also wrote the Children of the Corn remake that he directed. It's just yeah, I, it's shocking to me. Um, and apparently they're making another Salt. Wow. Okay. And he's writing it apparently. Um. And he's, yeah, the thing he's directing called Solara, which I really hope is not another American bastardization of Solaris. But anyway, he, holy crap. I, I fucking hope not. Anyway, yeah, um, seriously, the, the original Russian movie is fucking amazing. Just... You know, if you if you haven't watched any Andrei Tarkovsky, just yeah, unbelievably talented. Uh, you know, I've I've watched uh, Solaris and um, I, I want to say it's called An Andrei Rub Rubliev. Hold on, I'll have it momentarily. I know this is it seems completely unrelated to. I'm I'm just I'm trying to. Think happy thoughts. It's called Andre Rublev. Anyway, um, yeah, I, you know, at this point, you kind of know what you get with Kurt Wimmer. You know, he had a little bit of good work in him, and then it's just, and I'll acknowledge, you know, Salt, like, Salt and Total, and the Total Recall remake, part of it is also the, the direction, but the screenplays could have been so much better. Um, and the others, uh, let's see, yeah, so the, um, yeah, so Tad Daggerheart also wrote Black Lotus, which is also an action movie, oh, Frank Grillo, cool, I'm glad he's still working, he's really, really badass, um, let's see, Max Adams, has also written, you know, other similar stuff. Spencer Cohen. Oh, right, Spencer Cohen wrote Moonfall. Not by himself, but, yeah, so this is not the most preposterous movie he's written. Now, let's see, so the... Yeah, so the first movie has a huge climax, the second has a huge opening, the third has both a huge opening and a huge climax. Uh, this movie, I would say this one, it has a, a big climax. I, d I don't know that I would use the word huge. I feel like that's exaggerated, but I would not say it really quite has a huge opening. Now, let's see. So yeah, I, I would say that the, the first three Expendables movies... You know, each one is better than, you know, yeah, both of the sequels are better than what came before. And, yeah, this movie continues, they, they get a new director every single time. I, I really, I don't quite know why, but the, the, yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so a uh, problem with the first two is that the action is mainly by Sly and Statham. So, you know, I was hoping that this movie would manage to spread it out across these icons more. And I would definitely say that this does change things up. The action is no longer, you know, just primarily Stallone and Statham. Now it is almost exclusively Statham. And I get it. Like, I saw another reviewer say, I mean, I guess at this point, I don't know if Sly has the energy for it, which, which sucks. But, you know, you can, you can understand why, you know, the, the, let's see, the, the man was born in 1946. You know, the fact that he's, even appearing in movies this intense anymore is is 
ridiculous. The, the fact that he's not leading them anymore is completely understandable. Let's see. And yeah, you know, this one still barely has any women, and apparently we will not be getting a female focused, you know, expend out bells with, you know, like, yeah. Instead of bulls, it would be like the. the, the like the, the clock bells kind of thing, you know, because beauty, yeah. Um, and yeah, that was probably the only chance of getting to be badass in a lot of action. I will grant Maggie gets some in 2, Luna some in 3. There is some in, in this for the ladies, you know, and they absolutely bring it. They, they really, you know, give it their all. I mean, ultimately, the... the I think overall I would say every every major like every name in this gets at least a little bit where like you look at it and it's like okay that was memorable that was really cool but in part because there's so many and in part because it focuses on Statham and I'll grant you know he's charming he's he's one of the you know one of the best of the as is if we're talking acting talent you know, yeah, I, I, I wish that it hadn't, that, that it, I, I've, yeah, um, but yeah, I would definitely say I, I wish that they didn't try to fit in so many and then just have them all, like, do their thing within a short space of time if they could instead have like okay this icon is gonna get to really show their thing in the first 10 minutes and then we move on to another and another or something but yeah and um, yeah so like the the first three you know sometimes it gets too corny too tongue-in-cheek too cheesy and Let's see. And yeah, um, you know, so the second movie, the villain is a martial artist who, under the right circumstances, can deliver an acting performance. Um, yeah, the the other three, it's an actor who's done action movies, but not necessarily the big '80s kind of action. Who may have done B movies and. Yeah, I, I really, I hope they, if they make more, which, you know, I, 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 I would 100% be down for a female spinoff, or if they want to do, like, parts of this movie kind of feel like, oh, it's just the Statham spinoff, and just the others are, like, guests, to, you know, get, yeah, make guest appearances, I, I'd be fine with, you know, if they if they did those. I don't know if there's that much, like, if if it. I'll watch it if they make more, but I don't know if if we still. I feel like at this point they've kind of proven that they don't have a truly amazing one, in them, you know the the, you know. These these screenplays these yeah the the direction in these films just yeah uh, let's see and I like Megan Fox I love Megan Fox in Jennifer's Body. And on Two and a Half Men, I'm glad to see her again. I've never seen her in an action movie. It's not her I was avoiding. Avoiding It was Michael Bay. But I get the sense that in those movies, it's mostly that she's running away. Other people are doing the fighting. You know, and... Yeah. I... I think it, the, the... You know, there are female action icons that... You know... I could understand if they put in this, you know, but instead they, they, I don't know, maybe I'm, 
I'm not saying I don't want her to be in movies in general. I just, I, you know, frankly, she can do significantly better than this. She deserves significantly better than this. You know, but just, yeah, I mean, if, we, if we're talking, like, women who do action movies, I know that Charlize Theron has done a, a bunch. You know, you have people like, I, I have to admit, I don't really know her. I, I don't think I've seen... I, I haven't seen anything of her myself, but through Obscura's Lupa, I've seen a number of review. You know, I've seen a number of her videos reviewing Cynthia Rothrock movies. You know, the yeah. I I don't know why you wouldn't put yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, I I do appreciate that this movie is not over long, like. Frankly, the the third movie, you know, it's almost two hours in in total. You know, the others. Let's see. Yeah, the the others are are shorter. This one is ninety six minutes without end credits. Now, the let's see. The, the third movie is the most dramatic, dark, and heavy of the these movies. It's the one that comes the closest. It really, like, it comes so close to being, like, a movie. Like, there's, there's character arcs. There's, like, there's, there's an actual plot. It's not just, like, stringing a bunch of action scenes together and... You know, it's, it's, and honestly, the actors, the, at least the younger ones, do pretty well. It just, it, it feels weird for a movie like, for, for a series like this to do such, something so close to a serious movie. Now, let's see. Um... Yeah, and the um, yeah, so the the first two movies have classic rock songs, and the third one has rap. The final scene does have something that I think is classic rock. It's karaoke. I can only really hear the group from the cast singing. It's hard to tell. the The music in this movie does fit, and let's see. Yeah, and the yeah the third one has by far the most compelling and interesting best acted villain you know as cliched as it as it is right down to the personal connection between him and Sly it's given the most and best lines of the villains because they knew that Gibson still has it the this movie kind of treats the the true villain identity as a bit of a twist uh, some people said they guessed it going in other people say they were very surprised I'm not going to be spoiling it in the review section itself. I will say that the, you know, the person they chose, I can understand why they they thought that they could get a really solid performance out of. I don't know that I would really say that they did, and I'm not alone in, in feeling that way. Um, yeah. Now, uh, right, the, the, um, let's see, I said in my old review that I didn't think much of Ronda Rousey's acting in the third movie, honestly I'm coming around on it, she holds her own, it's great that she doesn't end up in a romantic rela relationship, she does kiss Sly on the cheek and say if you were 30 years younger, but it's because he showed he cared about the young team members, not because he's so alpha. Let's see. Right, and yeah, Antonio Banderas as, as a motor mouth is very funny in the third movie. This one has a character that is his son. The, uh, let's see, the character is Galan, played by Jacob Scipio. And, yeah, um, 
you know, it's it's difficult for I I I really really love Antonio Banderas, so it's difficult for me to see him replaced. I do think this guy does a, a really good job. He fits in very nicely. I think it's the only thing I've seen him in, but see, he was also in Bad Boys for Life. I still say they should have saved that title for a fourth movie and then spelled it with a number four. And uh, let's see. Yeah, you know, all four of these movies are about evil arms dealers. Is there any other kind? And, you know, usually they have an army. It might be mercenaries of their own. And, right. And, and um, as others have noted, this one does, you know, there are several that we that we saw in, in the other movies that are not in this at all so let's see was there a list right and yeah Cynthia Rothrock was apparently yeah she was seen filming in Germany for five or six days with an unconfirmed cast member yeah some people thought I don't know if she appeared in this I certainly didn't recognize her and I mean I've seen her face in a lot of obscure Lupa videos I feel she, you know she has a very recognizable face distinct so I feel like I would have spotted but yeah I could have sworn okay this says yeah Stallone, Statham, Dolph Lundgren, Randy Couture are the only actors to have appeared in all four installments of The Expendables. So, yeah, that gives you an idea of all the ones that are. Yeah. And right, and Ron Perlman, you know, is interested in appearing in the series. Yeah, I, I absolutely could see that. Let's see. Right, and Stallone would have liked for Jack Nicholson to appear in this, which that would have been really cool. And let's see. Yeah, and the third movie is the only where the villain's right hand man barely gets any build up. It's kind of weird because he's he is there. Like he has more than one scene, but he gets almost no build up, which yeah. In, in the first two and in this, the, the right hand gets build up. And... Let's see. Right, and uh, yeah, all four of these movies do manage, you know, every major character, even the ones that have very little screen time, gets at least some memorable lines that you couldn't just put in the mouth of another character. And... Yeah, the third movie, you actually see the preparation phase for the good guys. Much more tension and suspense than the first two. This one, not quite as you know much, but there is some suspense and tension. And... Let's see... And yeah, yeah, um, all four of these movies, there is at least one female character who does not enter into a relationship with one of the men or is made out to be awful by reducing her to a misogynist stereotype. It's a low bar, but I do appreciate that they do clear it. Uh, this movie does not use the mystique of Megan Fox the way Jennifer's body does. See. And you know the movie does have her as the 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 cool girl, which you know I I've heard that she played into that persona for a while. I forget if no, I don't. Yeah, I think she eventually stopped, at least in like you know I I don't know that much about her career. The though I do seriously respect you know apparently. Like, at the very start, she was in these movies that were very much for, like, teenage girls. And some people say she didn't do fantastic acting in them. But she had, like, I don't know if still, but she, for a while, had a devoted 
fan base of like teen girls who were really really happy when she did a movie for teen girls so you know that's really cool I, I you know the the yeah um, but yeah for for a while she she kinda she she took roles in movies where she played a cool girl and she did the cool girl thing in like in in interviews she she would have this like facade of you know you know being being unbothered by things but you know in in as far as i've understood from from like videos from the take and such more recently she's not done that at least in interview yeah um you know she's she's good as a cool girl now let's see i i will definitely say if, you know from what i hear when she was in michael bay's transformer movies she kind of felt like the material was so bad she didn't really want to, you know she didn't care enough to to really do what she could to make the movie work the way that she did in Jennifer's body where it absolutely worked i in this movie you also get that sense you know she can for some of these scenes there's yeah there's like there's at least one scene in particular in this movie where it seems like she can barely get the the words out and considering the dreck they've saddled her with I really don't blame her um, in other scenes she seems much more comfortable with it and yeah she's you know I don't I don't know that I would say anyone does fantastic acting in you know n you know no no major cast members do just out outstanding acting in any of these let's see i think this is the first time i see 50 cent in something i've heard he wasn't good in some other stuff i don't know that he's necessarily gotten better i it's it's too bad i think he's a very talented rapper and though he was at first really homophobic, apparently he has now like come around and and made um you know he has a positive relationship with his son who came out as gay, you know. So you know seriously respect that. I, f I mean acting, yeah, he's not that. I I do. You know, so like I mentioned, no one's no one's like hitting it out the park here. I d I'm not. I don't. I'm not saying he shouldn't be here. I'm just, you know. The other ones you you pretty much already know, but yeah, you know the the. Um, I get it. He looks cool. That's basically all he really has to do in this movie and that he absolutely does do you know it's not that different from seeing him in a music video he's just you know slightly obviously but he's got this kind of smooth cool kind of thing that we here in the west obsess over you know um, Statham does legitimately good acting when the material isn't really really dragging him down making it impossible um, yeah, you know, people like Dolph Lundgren, Sylvester Stallone, you know, they they do amazing work elsewhere. I think Dolph Lundgren absolutely kills it in the original Universal Soldier movie. Stallone is fantastic as Rocky and Rambo. You know, the, the, yeah. Um... This is only the second time I see Tony Ya in anything, um, and you're gonna hate me when I say that the only other thing I've seen him in is Monster Hunter. I know, I know, and no, I am not judging him based on these two movies. Um, you know the the yeah he has and he has he's appeared in a number of 
you know, hold on. Let's see. The, the original movies he did were, um, Ty, that's right. Um, and yeah, he's, he's beloved for, for his work there. And I 100% believe that he is amazing. You know, he doesn't get to show off that much here or in Monster Hunter. He does get some good acting moments. Um, and Eco Wise, who's known for the Raid movies, you know, the, the, oh, right, he, I completely forgot about that, but that's right, he does appear in The Force Awakens as well, so this is the second time I see him in, in something, but, yeah, um, he's got a good intensity to him, he's got screen presence, um, he, you know, I, I don't know if it's, Overall, it's probably more the what the screenplay has him do, but there is definitely there are some. You know, he's a he's a character we love to hate, and they do they probably push it a little hard. That it's one of those things where you know, oh, we got an R rating. Look at that. Look what we can do. But yeah, he is legit. You know, and and it's the kind of thing where if Eco did not have very much screen presence, it would be completely wasted. Uh, yeah, Andy Garcia. You know, my mom once said that if you can't say something nice, you shouldn't say anything at all. He's done better. Let's leave it at that. He, I, I don't think that it's... I don't think that he's now a bad actor. I think he felt that he, you know, s somehow they compelled him to do this. He read the script. He was deeply unimpressed. And, yeah. Huh. He was in a Father of the Bride remake. I wonder if it, if that one will let the bride actually be a character. Or if she's just there so that... We can watch the the father spiral. I I don't hate those two movies. I just I I really feel like they completely wasted. I can't believe I'm blanking on her name. Hold on. Um. So let's see. Father of the Bride. Uh, Kimberly Williams Paisley, you know, she's, yeah, um, Randy Couture, yeah, um, he still can't act based on, you know, based on these four movies, he, he does not seem like he's a good actor, um, Levi Tran has a, a strong presence on this. Uh, they don't give her a lot to do, but when she has something to do, she really delivers. And that is it for the cast. And let's see. That brings us to... So yeah, the the... According to Wikipedia, the original screenplay, like many sequels, started off as another project titled High Value Target, written by Spencer Cohen. Millennium Films originally announced the film as a Jason Statham star, but when the film was never made, they refashioned the script with Kurt Wimmer and Ted Daggerhart into an expendable film. The finished film still retains much of the high-value target script's action and plot line. And I, you know, it is, yeah, you can, you can tell that it wasn't always supposed to be an Expendables film. Now, the, let's see, yeah, so a couple of critic, 
you know, yeah, multiple reviews say the action is not handled well. The special effects are not convincing. And let's see. And yeah, yeah, that is it. So the yeah, uh, I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but the ending fits with what came before. I think the ending is fine. I understand why some people hate it with a passion. There's a there's an element of the ending that 100%. I get why some people thought it was just dreadful. And the movie, according to Google, and I have not, as far as I know, I have not been misled by that. This movie does not have a post credits scene. And let's see, so the. Right, the the technical aspects. The the cinematography was handled by Tim Maurice Jones, and yeah, um, you know it's not the only it's not the first action he's shot. He shot the three five five, Kick Ass two. Yeah, right, he he shot Snatch and Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. So, very, very talented. You know, the, the fact that the cinematography in this movie is not amazing it has to come down to the director. If, if the, you know, a director who doesn't, who isn't 100% aware of what he's doing can, can drag down a talented cinematographer. So the 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 movie's edited by Michael J. Duthie and let's see he's yeah he edited Mechanic Resurrection, Hunter Killer, Stargate, Universal Soldier. So yeah, Universal Soldier is very well edited. He's quite talented. So that again, there's this one bit of editing early in the movie that I think was very misjudged and I can imagine it might have been there in the in the script um, I don't think I want to give away exactly what but I'll just say that there's a very there's a very early scene that looks like it's going to be very big and then it cuts and at first I thought oh chronological jump you're gonna tell us you know X amount of hours earlier, it was the, you know, but then it just doesn't, and it, I think there's, yeah, there's like several minutes of another scene, and then it cuts back, and the momentum is just completely lost, and I get, I get it, they wanted, they wanted to hint that there was something big coming, but it was a mistake. They, they should definitely have, instead, either let the scene play out before or after but it was a mistake to to chop it up like that the music is by Guillaume Roussel and let's see yeah it's like he's done other Yeah, um, he does fine. The the let's see. Yeah, so the that brings us to the the best elements, which yeah. Um, like with the others, you know, the 80s style action. The the worst aspect is probably the the just the way that you can 
it it really doesn't you can tell it wasn't always supposed to be an expendables movie and let's see so so yeah um you know other reviewers say the the worst thing is the the way that the action is handled and yeah, uh, the thing I was most worried about was the depiction of women, and yeah, the movie absolutely has issues there that I'll talk about in the spoiler section. Th yeah, I was looking to, I was looking forward to more of this franchise, and I gotta say, this is the first time one of these has really made me feel like, you know, I don't, I don't know if very many people working on this really wanted to make it like I, I th the fact that the screenplay was conceived of as something else and then they like tried to salvage it by turning it into this really shows several of the actors really don't feel like they you know yeah it, it does not feel like they really want to be here they that they think this is good material for them to be working with. Uh, the trailers definitely give too much away. Um, you know, if you like the movie, the, the trailers are worth watching afterwards. If you watch them before, just try not to think about if something that happens in the trailer has happened yet while you're watching the movie. And oh right, the the cover and poster. Let me just check in case they made another since I last checked. The poster does not give too much away, and does give a decent idea of what the movies like. That is the thing, you know. If you already watched the trailer. The the you know you do get a decent sense of what the movie is like. It does make it seem like the performances are more alive than they are in a lot of the movie. Now um, on Rotten Tomatoes, it has sixteen percent on the tomato meter. Of the 81 reviews, only 13 are fresh. The average score is 3.70 out of 10. But the you know there are over 100 verified user ratings. The average rating is 3.7 out of 5, and it comes to an average of 69. Nice. And the consensus solid work from Jason Statham and some halfway decent set pieces aren't enough to make out up for expend forables, lackluster action, and cheap looking effects. And on Metacritic, it has a 29 out of 100 from critics, 4.4 from users, and yeah, so the, yeah, the critics. 64% uh, of the reviews are negative, 29 are mixed, only 7 are positive. Of the user scores, 45% uh, are negative, 30 are mixed, only 25% are positive. And uh, yeah, to, to add to the, you know, about the action, every so often there'll be something legitimately inspired, but a lot of the time it is very very straightforward and and basic and you know it's hard when there are so many there are too many cooks in the kitchen it's hard to say exactly but having not watched other movies directed by this guy knowing that he comes from a stunt background you know like i want to make clear that i say Stunt is a very, very challenging element of production. It's it, it's crucial 
the the um, to, to to making action movies look as good as they do. I am absolutely, you know, I'm I'm not saying I could do better. You know, stunt, you know, solid stunt work is responsible for a lot of the greatest thrills in action movies. But at the end of the day. You know, when whenever someone comes from another part of the filmmaking, you know, it's it's often some of the ones that c that come out really well are the ones who come from cinematography because they're already good at telling a story with the camera, knowing what the camera needs to be focusing on and how to move it and such. You know, even editors can can struggle with with that but stunt you know stunt people and effects people who start directing without having like spent a lot of time you know learning direction from the ground up if yeah they can they can kind of struggle and that is what we see here he just he knows he is legitimately good at the like the stunts in the movie are good. There are some stunts that are very very impressive, but he does not really show a knack for staging an action scene and capturing the action in a way that is very very clear and visceral and just really really drives. You know, every, every it, yeah drives the the drives the scene, keeps the energy up. Every so often, there'll be something in this movie where you're like, "Wait, what just happened in in the act?" You know, it it just yeah. Um, so that's you know, I think some of the blame lays there, and I don't know the other writers, but having watched Kurt Wimmer, having watched other movies. That are action movies that Kurt Wimmer has written for, such as Equilibrium and yes, also Ultraviolet. May God have mercy on my soul. I'm just kidding. There is no God, but I did watch that movie, and that's how I know. The the sometimes Kurt Wimmer is amazing at conceiving. And staging an action scene and then other times he is very much not and to be clear I, I absolutely am aware that some of the action that is underwhelming in equilibrium is down to budgetary restraints but even so like yeah he is not always amazing and you do see that some here you know, I have to admit, it's been forever since I watched Salt. I think I only watched that movie once. I did end up watching the Total Recall remake more than once. And we're back. So, yeah, on IMDb, it has 61 user reviews, 43 if you hide spoilers. And... Yeah, 16.2% uh, voted 5 out of 10, 16.1 voted 6, 15.3 voted 10, 11.5 voted 7, 10.2 voted 4, 8.8 .8 voted 1, 7.3 voted 3, 5.8 voted, voted 8, 5.3 voted 2, 3.5 voted 9. I gotta say, this is one of the ones where I think... The ones that are really, really high seem to me like it's people who either have very low expectations for something like this, lower than even mine, or that are trying to like even out. They feel like the average has gone too low. I think it's harsh to give this one, two, or three, but I can understand it. And yeah, the the special effects are just not 
good. They're very, very unconvincing. They're very obvious. I've seen a couple of people point out, you know, they've seen better special effects in YouTube videos, and they don't even have to be, like, super recent ones. And, yeah, um, I, I wish I could argue with that. But the, the CG and green screen, some of those are just really, really unconvincing. And I think that is, yeah, um, I rate this six big 80s action blowouts out of ten. And, yeah, uh, this is not one of those movies where I feel like it deserves better than the reception it's gotten so far. I don't think this is a movie that people are going to look back on and, like, say, oh, it was, it was just completely misunderstood. <sighs> yeah, uh, I mentioned before, I think, you know, movie, the, the yeah, the second movie is better than the first, the third is better than the first and second. This is the, the worst of the four, in my opinion. And that brings us to the thoughts section. So from here on out, there are major spoilers. So starting with notes taken while watching on pad of paper as per usual. So the movie is just as tasteless as the third in bringing up this guy. Like, I th isn't this supposed to be like where where we go to these so that we can like usually I'm not a I I don't like when someone criticizes something that's serious by saying we go to the movies to turn our brains off, you know. Not all of us do, but for a movie like this, yeah, we, we kind of do, but they gotta bring up Gaddafi and his chemical plant, you know, like, obviously it's not that someone's watching this movie and thinking, oh, Gaddafi, I really like that guy, of course not, nobody, you know, but, but like, you don't have to make, it could have been anything. Let's see. And yeah, some, some vehicles come in for attack using guns. And then we do the thing where I thought it was a chronological jump. And I gotta say, um, I get... I, I do think there are some action movies where the fact that we don't know exactly what's going on from right away works really well. But I think this movie, it I think it took too long before this movie for us to realize that what we're seeing is the bad guy enacting his plan. Because at the start, you see all these vehicles come in and it's like, oh, you know, this is the big opening mission for the Expendables. But no, it's it's the bad guy. It's the, the, you know, the right hand of the bad guy who comes in to... to you know, that that eventually becomes clear. But I really think it would have hit harder. I think the music should have been darker. I think there should have been some shots that really underline this is the bad guy. But he's just kind of, you know, the it's it's the, um, I, what was his name? The, the character Ramat, Iko Uwai's character, you know, He's just, like, kind of generically badass the way that, you know, the the um, the Expendables themselves are. So, you know, yeah, I kind of thought, oh, I guess he's, a, he's now a member of the Expendables. And, yeah, the, the first scene that Megan Fox is in is the one I was talking about in the review where just just the acting is not 
very good, and I really don't blame her for not... It, it, you get the sense that she doesn't really want to be there. She doesn't want to be delivering these lines and acting in a scene like this because she realizes how misogynist this is. And it's maybe, you know, I don't... Like I said, I haven't really followed her career, but I can imagine this might not... I Based on some, some things I've heard her say in an interview, and like... Just, you know, I, I, I can imagine that she likes the idea of showing, you know, women can kick ass too. And, you know, she may be signed on before she realized she was going to be asked to do a scene like this. But I don't know, it's possible it is that she didn't really have much of a choice and this was just something that she was hoping would boost her career. You know, but just, yeah. It's such a misogynistic joke with the thing that, you know, Statham tells her to calm down, and she screams, calm down, I am calm. You know, just, yeah. Like, I, I, there's a, I don't think that, like, the, you, you can, I think you can make a joke where, like, a guy tells a girl to calm down, and we're not laughing at her, we're laughing at him, but this isn't that. Let's see, and... Yeah, and then the... Um, let's see... Yeah, so the, you know, the very, very brief action we got at the very start was just not enough. And I mentioned in the review, you know, this is the scene I was talking about in the review. I, they should definitely either have, the scene should have played out in full either before or after the, the these other things, you know, just... I'm, I'm not even necessarily completely opposed to having like a, a tease of action later to come and then saying you know 30 hours earlier or something but just you know take a bigger chunk of an action scene take it from later in the movie and so that you know yeah or, or yeah I mean would there be a huge problem with just letting the entire scene play out? I think if the if the movie opened with that entire action scene and then we see them talking about them, you know, yeah, I I think that might have worked better. And I can I I don't know for sure, but I can see Kurt Wimmer writing something like this. And may, honestly, maybe if the direction and editing had been at least a little stronger. I think it should maybe also have gone on for a little longer. I think it would have had a, it would have been a very strong opening. You know, for like, without a doubt, the the theatrical cut of Ultraviolet. You know, that's there's a very very short action scene there, but it it lands. You know, it has an impact. That movie isn't that good, but. The opening does leave some impression, and I wouldn't really say that's the case with Expendables 4. Let's see. Yeah, and we have the macho bullshit and the fight with the whole thing with Jumbo Shrimp. And, you know, of course the, the fight takes place in this, like, what's it called? A, um, a, a bar that has, like, you know, dancing girls, you know, so, yeah, um, women are largely objectified in the movie, they're, you know, some of them are good at fighting, uh, you know, most of them are sexualized, and some, I, I, I think the only major female character not to be sexualized is Lucy, Lucy Newman Williams Russo and I guess the the wife of the the um, 
G general, I think they said he was. Yeah, and then we go back to the action at the the start. And let's see. Yeah, and we we meet the the son of Galgo, Galan. And we meet Marsh, played by Andy Garcia. And yeah, we learn, you know, I, I do think, at least hypothetically, at least like in theory, the thing with Ocelot could be really compelling. Uh, I'm not going to claim that I like. I wasn't 100% certain, you know before it was revealed that it was Marsh who was actually you know but the yeah I I wouldn't really say that it had the it it the the it didn't hit really hard the way that I feel like it you know should um, right, I want to briefly talk about, you know, so the, um, yeah, so the guy who plays Jumbo Shrimp, Mike Miller, um, is actually martial artist, and, you know, be yeah, because he's not, yeah, and he's mainly known for, for, yeah, he's done stunts for 80 films. He's acted in 22, so... Um, but yeah, um, you know, the fact that he's not extremely tall makes them make the, the jokes about his height, and yeah, it just felt really nasty. And like, I feel like when you, when you have... When you have the Expendables up against just bad guys, people who we want to see them stop, then the the macho bullshit can be fun. I think when it's camaraderie between the the you know people who are on the same side, that can work. It, here it just feels kind of kind of bitter. Like the scene reads like someone like one of the writers recently had a bad experience in a bar and wanted revenge but couldn't carry it out in real life. And yet again we get the ear story which I guess it's mildly amusing that the editing means we can't hear it. That's almost a joke. And Sly plays classical music because it's relaxing. The, the banter between Sly and Statham is fine. It's, it's not quite up to the, the standards of the others. And, yeah, we learn Galan is quite a pervert, which I do feel like is a logical way to do, like, a younger version of the, the Banderas character. And, yeah, we, we learn, you know, the, the wife is now dead in order to, you know and and the son will be next you know the the that was one thing where it kind of felt like oh you know aren't we edgy you know i i will say like the very moment that we saw that the the general like his family seems to to like him you know so like immediately I guess that, yeah, that is supposed to be a hint that what we're seeing is the bad guy, but you just told us that this is, like, the chemical plant Gaddafi owned. So, like, it just, you know, because, like, the moment, you know, Gaddafi, we all know, you know, really bad guy, so it, it just... Yeah, it it felt 
like a like a very weird kind of yeah and yeah we see that gunner misses with the sniper which of course really makes the mission not go as as planned i will say the thing with you know we over the course of these movies there's a lot of like machine guns mounted to cars firing on other you know so them losing use of one and then taking out another you know it might also have been like a budget thing but i thought that worked and the the jumping between the cars you know there was definitely some good energy there and and tension um i will i i agree with those who said that it never really felt like Lee was in serious danger, which is obviously a problem for for a movie like this. There, it kills a lot of tension. Get in, losers. We're going shopping. Galan quoted Mean Girls. I I don't know how to feel about that. I mean, was that supposed to be a tribute to Megan Fox? Because that wasn't. Like, I, I know early in her career, she did a movie with, you know, a movie for that, that teen girls loved with um, Lindsay Lohan, but that wasn't the one. The, you know, she was in, hold on, I'll have it. She was in Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, not Mean Girls, you know, so just, yeah. And... Yeah, uh, Barney seemingly dies, and they have a memorial, and Lee is sitting by himself, but he was waiting for Gina, and we learn that he's been fired. Let's see. And... Yeah, we see Lee, and, you know, at home, and... You know, he's got Barney on, you know, on his phone and his contact list. And, you know, he's sitting there wondering. I mean, on the one hand, I will never see him again alive, so I should delete it. But on the other hand, it's a little too early in this movie to say for sure that I'm not going to be haunted by him. In which case, leaving him in my contacts is just going to make things more convenient for the ghost. You know, weighing the options, really. I can't find the name of the character. You know, in, in the movie, he's just referred to as social media influencer. I don't think they ever say the the actual name of the, the guy. So, yeah, I guess I'll just... I'll be calling him influencer. The you know so so yeah you know bodyguard for influencer is the only thing that Lee finds that makes any sense for him, and it is satisfying watching him beat this guy on camera with the camera. In fact, I do think that the fact that the guy is very misogynistic really doesn't land, considering that the movie itself and Lee are also misogynistic so it's very hypocritical you know I'll, I'll never turn down watching a misogynist you know get some comeuppance you know I'm, I'm not advocating real-life violence I'm against real-life violence but the yeah it just if it, it feels really really hypocritical because like I mean I guess it's the fact that he's not in a committed relationship and the fact that he's talking about having sex with more than one, maybe? Because Lee is with Gina and they're, you know, for them it's, it's you know, monogamous, I guess. Yeah, I, it just, it, I don't think it, it really works. And then Lee, the hero, breaks into his ex's place. Just, yeah, I... 
it's it's wild to me that this movie was written and directed today. Like this feels like a script that's in, you know other than the really modern references like 20 or 30 years old like and and this is also where I feel like you know Megan Fox you can understand why she wasn't super happy about at least some aspects of this script because like today we recognize that a guy breaking into you know like following his ex is is really really messed up and they you know they make sure to show no 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 he is breaking in you know he doesn't have a key to her place anymore and it's just yeah and you know we learn that the expendables are going to be you know getting revenge on the onesler for the death of barney Sorry, not, not one slur. Ancillary, that's his name. What I'm getting at is I think it's a kind of silly nickname they've given him. Ocelot, I think, was the real... Just, yeah. And, yeah, they... You know, Lee and Gina do the fight as foreplay thing, which... You know, I I am aware that there are a number of people. As long as you're certain that it is actual, like consensual foreplay, you know, go nuts. And I know that people of all genders, regardless of gender or sexual or sexual orientation, you know, people all over the spectrum find that, you know, yeah find that really appealing. Not everyone, but some from all over the spectrum. And that's great. It's, you know, go buck wild as long as it's consensual. And I do appreciate there's multiple references to Lee going down on Gina. You know, when <laughs> when she has him in a headlock, so she's sitting on his face, she says this was always my favorite seat in the house and that I do there I believed Megan Fox 100 percent not necessarily for Statham but you you get the sense you know yeah based on some things that you know she she does really come across as one of you know a, a woman who isn't okay with sex just being for the guy, you know, and yeah, that, you know, and, and what was his response? I, ah, crap, it's not written on IMDb. I, did he, yeah, I don't remember his response. I'm afraid I don't remember if it was like, also like backing up that, you know, and then, you know, after the foreplay, you know, he's like, I, f I, f I don't remember his exact line, but he says something, and he's like on top of her, and she says, she, yeah, something about like, first things first, or something, and then she like puts her hand at the top of his head and pushes his head down, very clearly implying, you know, ugh, yeah, because of the implication, no. She, like she might as you know she is basically saying go down on me you know eat me out and yeah really again as long as it's consensual you know that I, I certainly love that kind of confidence the you know you should feel confident to ask for what you want in bed as long as yeah let's see yeah and and you know Lee gives her the knife and we learn I do really appreciate we later you know she's not like honey you came to save me she's like yeah duh what the fuck did you think did you really think I was that fucking stupid that I would think oh you know how sweet he gave me a knife no I knew it was it had a tracker we had to get you on board somehow you know just yeah yeah we learned that Galan has not said a word since Barney died, and we later find out why. And yeah, it's also they make like a joke about how you know, like you know, they're talking. Yeah, Marsh says you know we have to find out who the the ocelot is, 
you know, and Gina says, you know, or her, it could be a woman, and Marsh is like, you know, yeah, okay, him or her, and it's just, like, I mean, she's right, I kind of, I, that's the kind of thing that makes me wish that they had had it revealed, that it was one. Honestly, when she said that, like, I was thinking, wait, is it her? You know, is she, like, I, for, for a while, I was expecting it to turn out that she was the one, but, yeah. But, but, yeah, you know, instead, it's left as just this joke about, oh, you know, she, she can't let that one go. She has to say it could be a woman. It's just, yeah, not a fan. And I, I like, you know, Desha points out, you know, if you kill, when you kill people, you lose yourself. And he had to stop killing before there was nothing left of himself kind of thing. There is some tension on board the, the ship. And, yeah, you know, there's a lot of paranoia once they're once they've been caught they're convinced that they someone sold them out you know it's it's like the thing if it was reeking of testosterone and Lee manages to to sneak on and some of the guards love the influencer which yeah and we see the you know actually yeah you know what that's a pretty clear message. No one, none of the good guys like the influencer. The only people, the only, yeah. When we see someone who does like the influencer, they're the bad guys. That's, I, I wish it wasn't like hypocritically criticizing misogyny. But I do still appreciate, yeah, you know, seriously. Fuck people like that. It's, he's, he's, there's a, there's a, you know, again, I, I wish that it wasn't, I feel like they're also making, like, a fat phobic joke about, like, oh, guy, you know, guys who look like that shouldn't be, you know, mistreating women. But th there's a, there's a, like, a Andrew Tate vibe to him, so, yeah, fuck him. Absolutely, and, yeah, that, you know, that was, uh, um... I, do, I don't hate that element. I, ju I just wish it wasn't hypocritical, that's all. And, yeah, we see, you know, torture for information, you know, apparently works, but, you know, we know that it doesn't in real life, and it is the kind of thing... Although, wait, yeah, but Marsh later turns out to not be... Yeah, he they were just staging it so that he would... Yeah, okay, that's, and the, the, um, let's see, yeah, so, you know, for some of this movie, it's kind of die hard, but on a cargo ship. It was, you know, there were some really, really inspired moments with the motorbike, with machine guns, and the the chase and the part where they ride at each other. Very cool when Desha attacks. I don't know. It, it just kind of made me chuckle when Lash did actually try to look at Toll Road's dick. And Galan talks again, and he's talking about revenge, and the others say, you know what, I like you better when you're not talking. And yeah, they talk about you know it would start World War Three. Does the Pope shit in the woods? No, stop saying shit like that. He also doesn't shit next to the bed. You know, it is like, dude, try harder. I mean, come on, we all know it's. Is the Pope a castrate? Let's see. And yeah, so 50 cents. 
I think it is just called PIMP. The the rap song plays to you know for extraction. That was a, a cute little gag. And Lash does indeed fight with a Lash. That was very very cool. And Gina does some Black Widow fighting moves, wrapping her thighs around the 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 neck of of enemies and such. And Gunner going back to drinking, even though he's been sober, is treated as a good thing. It means that he can fight properly again. You know, I mean, it's a, look. At some point, it just kind of feels it. It feels like like Deadpool one and two have very provocative, very offensive jokes, but they're more well written than that one. You know, it feels like the kind of joke that would get rejected from a from a Deadpool script. You know, it's I'm I'm not saying these movies have to communicate good values like. Very clearly, they are devoted to not doing that, but then every so often, you know, it will say, you know, it'll it'll make this hypocritical statement coming out against misogyny whilst indulging in misogyny and have this, like, weird pro-alcoholism message, like, just, yeah... Right, and I really, really enjoyed Lash and Desha versus that one guy. That was really, really cool. Them teaming up. If they make more movies, I, I would really love a spinoff that focuses on Desha and Lash together. Th they were really, really great. And I like Lee versus Rama. Ra yeah, Rahmat. You know, both of them have been established as great fighters, and yeah, now they're fighting each other. And this is something that the, you know, the, let's see, the first, yeah, the, maybe not so much the first, but the second movie also did, yeah, I, I believe so. The third one didn't, really, but yeah. This is also the first time that the the right hand man has a lot of personality, and yeah, Marsh is revealed as Ocelot, and you know the the guy who can identify him is called Bai, so he says bye bye bye, which like in addition to being this really goof like yeah goofy corny cheesy joke like are you are you intentionally referencing and sync right now are you okay i are have, has anybody checked on the writers of this movie cuz i don't know if, if some somebody should check on them i, I don't know if they're 100% okay right now I did, like, the, you know, okay, so we have 12 wins and the helicopter blows up. I didn't think you'd be needing that. Just, yeah. I know, not, not an exact quote, but just, yeah. And, yeah, Lee pretends he's going to go with the rest of them, but he stays on the, the ship as the only person so that he can stop it. And it looks like there's going to be a mano a mano fight and then Stallone comes back and you know yeah Lee has the the what are they what are they called knuckle knuckle dusters and you know Sly shoots a guy right next to him and he said you you almost fucking killed me Sly says you're welcome so that that scene book ends more or less, book ends the the movie, which you know I can appreciate that. That's a, a that can be a really neat tool, and I I respect this thing. Of, you know, they're they're like ah, oh, they're so cool. They don't even need to make like 
you know, as soon as Spy is back, they are right back on track, right back in the groove of things. Yeah, and so the, the nuke explodes underwater, and the effects are not great. And, yeah, I mean, I've... I understand that some people were really, really frustrated with the movie bringing back Sly. I feel like at this point, like, just, I, I don't, I'm not telling them not to be frustrated. In, you know, the way I see it, no major character, at least good guy, you know, is very likely to die in this series and stay dead. They brought back Gunner. You know, it seriously looked like he died, you know, in the in the middle or so of the first movie, and then he's just back at the very end. You know, I do appreciate in this movie they bring up, you know, when, when they're all, like, paranoid, you know, one of them says, Gunner, you betrayed us back in the first movie. And, yeah, we see that Jumbo Shrimp was used to fake the death. And, like, I don't know, I, I, it felt, like, really, really harsh and bitter in a way that I don't, I don't really think that it justified being that harsh. You know, I, I maybe I missed something, maybe... You know, I'm not a dude, bro. Maybe if some, you know, if one watches this video, you can hit me up in the comments. Let me know what did Jumbo Shrimp do that was so bad that he deserves to to be knocked out and wake up just in time to see himself die. I mean, you realize this is the kind of thing that usually the villains do, not the heroes. You know, the way that th this movie ends with that kind of thing where like Mission Impossible 2 which I guess by now is 23 years old that was how that one opened but that was the villain doing it not the hero you know I'm not saying it's the first time that this movie that this movie series has had heroes do something really extreme but yeah and that is it for let's see um, right, and the, yeah, in, in one scene, you know, Galan, like, it's like, oh, he can barely control himself, he screams during an action scene, you know, white supremacists have long claimed that non-whites are inherently worse at controlling their urges than white people, so, you know, I don't know, maybe some people who share his ethnicity can watch and feel like he's reclaiming it for, for them, but... Yeah, I, d I don't love having such a negative stereotype. Yeah. And that is actually everything. So, yeah. Um, hit, me on the, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what do you think, you know, would you like to see Expendables 5? Expend 5 bolts. Or would you like to see a, um, what's it called, spin-off, you know, yeah, and, you know, what, what should be the plot of the next movie or spin-off, and, yeah, if a spin-off, who do you think it should focus on, I, I pretty much, if, I, I would definitely watch a, a Desha and Lash spin-off, centric spin-off. Uh, I I would watch more that focuses on like Gina. Honestly, I I don't necessarily hate the idea. I I think they sh they really need to you know stop with the misogyny. But Lee and Gina, I I could see the the you know a, yeah a movie that focuses purely on them, either without a team. Or where, like, a team is... I, yeah, what I'm saying is... A movie where the two of them are, like, constantly working together. Kind of thing. You know, like... Maybe... Yeah, and, like, maybe traveling together. 
and it's just the two of them. Something like the the Born Identity with Matt Damon, you know. So, yeah, so something like that, but with her also kicking ass, and you know, completely getting rid of, if if at all possible, completely getting rid of the the misogyny. If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page. One, two more links to stuff like relevant playlists. I suggested video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie. Um, I also do one per week talking about the about Ahsoka. One talking about the most recent episode I've personally gotten around to watching of Scream Queens, one for The Bear. Almost every single day I do one for the most recent episode I've gotten around to watching of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And recently the Reviewing Thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you're more of this like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back account. That's what's catch me next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording. I'll catch you next time. And in closing, yeah, seriously, fuck misogynistic social media influencers. Yeah. I'm not saying that in real life I would want someone like Jason Statham to beat them up. But they... F they fucking suck. And... I like that, you know, the, the comments he got were actually you know positive for for Lee but not for him like every, you know a bunch of you know women and maybe also men and others I don't judge like falling in love with with Lee for yeah that was it was self-indulgent but it was kind of funny